Hi, I'm Andrew Phillips, Curator of Education and Public Programs at the Museum of Industry here in Stellarton, Nova Scotia. And what we're looking at right now is a diorama of a, of a 19th century sawmill. And throughout the 1800s and before even, you would have seen all sorts of mills like this all throughout the province of Nova Scotia. A great many streams and rivers all around the province would have had one or even more mills like this set up along it. You can see that what they've done is to uh, build a dam across the stream that gives them a nice uh, mill pond in the back, a good supply, a reservoir of water to use, and the water is allowed to flow down uh, through a sluice gate. It hits the wheel at the top, it's what's called an overshot wheel, and the force of the water causes that wheel to turn the turning of the wheel itself is what operates the machinery inside the mill and gets it to do the work. It's what's really the motor, the provider of energy for the work that's being done, which in this case would be sawing big logs into planks of wood that then could be used for building houses or ships or what have you. These mills also usually operated seasonally. Quite often what would happen is that uh, workers would be cutting timber in the forest and lumber camps during the winter and then in the spring they'd be able to drive the logs on the stream down to the mill. In the spring also you'd have all the snow and ice melted, you'd have a good supply of water in the pond and you'd have enough water really to operate the mill all throughout the spring. In summer you might have a drought, you may not have enough water in the pond to do your work and people then would look for other kinds of employment. You might have your own farm or you might act, uh, work as a laborer somewhere else, and you keep yourself busy that way all throughout the summer. In the fall, other mills would start into action. You'd have rains through the fall, again, that would replenish the supply of water in the pond, and that was the time when grist mills might be most active, grinding grain into flour. And then in the winter, once again, you'd have the workers going back to work in the forests, cutting timber or doing other kinds of jobs. So quite often people in this kind of an economy would shift their kinds of employment all throughout the season, finding different kinds of work according to what was going on at any given time. The benefit to something like this also, if we think of uh, modern day concerns over the environment and greenhouse gases through the combustion of fossil fuels, a mill like this is using a renewable source of energy. The water is constantly being restored by the snow and rain, and it's not actually burning anything to uh, get the work done. On the other hand, though, it was blocking up the streams. It prevented the uh, fish, perhaps, from migrating to spawning grounds. The uh, rotten logs in the pond would create an environment, perhaps, that might not be very good for life. So it did have some impacts on the environment itself. But like I say, you would have a whole variety of different kinds of mills for different kinds of work on streams like this around the province. And we'll be looking at some examples of those different kinds of mills in just a few minutes.